Hello everyone and welcome to Canvassing DFW. I am Jose on the mic and with me is my lovely co-host, the super hot and fabulous, amazing dancer, Amay. How are you doing? I am great, Jose. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. Um, because there aren't enough podcasts in the world, we decided to go ahead and uh, throw our hat in the ring, as it were. And so, uh, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, we have something to say. Of course, we do. And we know people. And we know people, <laughs> which is actually uh, the the next best thing. Um, <laughs> the whole premise uh, we came up with this idea a few months ago, and we've been kicking it around. Still trying to. Obviously, this is the um, the uh, inaugural episode. Aplauso! Aplauso! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking about this for a long yeah, time. Yeah, we have, and, and so we finally uh, decided. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, you know get this thing going. Um, ultimately, what we would like to do is uh, get the local talent, uh, be it artists, uh, dancers, musicians. Uh, if you are into the arts in any kind of uh, way, shape, manner, form. Uh, we want to encourage and promote you. We want to encourage and promote Especially you. Especially if we like you. Well, yeah, even, <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> That does always I mean, help. I feel like I have good taste. Sure. I mean, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, d- d- give you a, uh, a spot where you can go on and, uh, you know, promote yourself, uh, better yourself if we, if we can possibly help you do so. Uh, we would love to do that. Yes. Um, so that is uh, what our intent, that's our goal. And so with, uh, with that in mind, everybody now knows what we're uh, going to be uh, doing. I would like to sit there and you can... I'll get all the information here later on. Get in touch with us um, uh, so that uh, we can go ahead and, hey, you got somebody that uh, that you want to go ahead and say promote. I want to hear about them and we can get them on the show, uh, time permitting. That would be kind of where we're going with this. Yeah, and then the other direction or to kind of uh, backpack on that. for. <laughs> for lack of a better term, because you know how I am with my terms. But anyway, um, so a lot of people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area are actually not from Dallas-Fort Worth. They're from literally all over the world. And I feel like there's a super group of talented people, artists, musicians, dancers in this area. Some are known, some are not known. Uh, We recognize talent. We're not experts by any means, but... Uh, for example, on a, a fellow podcast, we uh, talked about or uh, really encouraged uh, an artist, Andrew Kochi, who is uh, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Some of you do know me from the Ian Gleason That's show. Right. We are not uh, obviously breaking from that. This is just a side project that uh, Ame and I wanted to do. And uh, uh, because, you know, we can sit there and cover things that uh, we can't cover on, on our show. Yeah, and we um, love the arts, and we love music, and yeah, we love everything. dance, um, so and just anything. So it's just our way of, uh, uh, if we know someone has talent or has something, maybe they're very young, and they just haven't had a chance to uh, show their talents in a lot of different areas. We would we want to promote and encourage them. I know in my business i was very much had some key people encouraging me and promoting me and getting me to where i am today as a dancer i might not be the best dancer in the world but i know a couple things well that and (laughs) you know you you uh you've been your passport's been stamped a few times that's right (laughs) (laughs) i have some very interesting passports yeah sure 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 sure. and so yeah so uh you're i know a couple of dance steps i might be able to show you a few things i i'm the i'm the technical side of this she's the talent side of it and so so uh, we're just going to go and, and make this happen. So that, um, but getting to that, you are actually, uh, to, not to put it, uh, you know, uh, mildly, you are world renowned. You've been, you've, you've uh, been, around, you've been around. Okay, I've been around the world. I've been around the world. Been Don't around. get me to sing because that is not my talent. No, that, but that is not one of our. I talents, have danced all over the world, but I am not the best dancer in the world. But I sure in the heck try my darndest and. One of the things I love well, to do the is thing. right. It's the effort. Oh, you yes, get, you get an A for effort. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I definitely enjoy teaching. I enjoy performing. I really feel the freest when I'm in a, in a performance and when I'm performing. 
um, a dance number, uh, especially professionally, that's when I feel the freest. Um, you know, other than other times, which... Yeah, well, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, that's not what this podcast is all about, Betty. It's it's the wrong podcast. But I've been inspired (laughs) to perform, certainly. Speaking of which, uh, (laughs) you actually just got back uh, from a dance competition. Is that that correct? That's right. It's the... How did that go, by the way? Wonderful. Savannah Dance Classic. It was the name of the competition. Okay. Run by some wonderful people. Um... Uh, including the organizers, uh, and that's not all of the organizers, uh, Mark Brock, Donna Hamza, Jan, um, so sorry, Jan, for getting your last name right now, and Jean-Paul, but those are, <laughs> <laughs> but those are the newest uh, organizers to the event, uh, Mark Brock and Donna Hamza uh, had it last year. Um, so this is, you know, I'm not sure how long... Um, uh, Mark Brock's been involved with the Savannah Dance Classic, but the last few years, Donna Hamza, Jan, and Jean-Paul have joined in. Beautiful event. Fun. Savannah is a enchanting city. I have, oh, my I have goodness. heard nothing but good things about Savannah, Georgia. Yes. Unfortunately, I've not had a chance to go through there. I'm yeah. hoping to put that, not exactly on my bucket list, but certainly. Uh, I would put it on your bucket list if uh, I were you. Uh, yeah, it's not, that great. Let, let's not get that crazy. All right. Um, the Savannah Dance Classic is part of uh, the NDCA group of competitions, which stands for the National Dance Council of America. There you go. These are. Uh, Shout out to them. Right. And these are competitions that are nationally uh, renown. Um, so they're pretty, most of the competitions like the uh, nationals, which is the, uh, you know, the United States Ballroom, United States Championships, Ohio Star Ball, Emerald Ball, these are all big competitions. Not the only ones, I'm just, I'm just spouting off the ones off the top of my head. They're very intense. It's for the best, not just in the country, but the best in the world. And so it can be kind of intense. So the oh, nice. nice thing about Savannah Dance Classic is there was such talent there in terms of professional dancers and amateur dancers, but everybody was just kicked back and relaxed. Eating. This is Savannah, Georgia. Yes. <laughs> we, were at, we were at the Hyatt Regency on the Savannah River. Nice. Beautiful patio overlooking. So it was all about a combination of beautiful dancing, dance to the best of your ability, but have a great time, relax, and enjoy. So that was the vibe there. And uh, I had a student competing there. He's oh, okay. So uh, how did that go? Well, Richard, my student, did win the top gold dancer of the competition. I'm just saying. It's just a fact. I'm, I'm not trying to brag. Yeah, let, let me go ahead and pat you on the back. So yeah, you I, I, uh, can you reach? Yeah, yeah so, so you don't hurt like your shoulders. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Rotate no, I'm very it, uh, proud of him. He did a great job. So, you know, it's an accomplishment and it's fun. But that's the thing I want everyone to remember about dancing is it should be fun. And I feel like everyone should dance. Uh, how great. long have you had this particular student? Over 20 years. Over 20 years? Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh, how often does he get out and do, or actually you, I guess, uh, get out and do competitions with him? I mean, because I'm curious. He usually competes two or three times a year, which is not a lot for a competitive student. So he, uh, he likes to travel and, oh, by the way, let's go ahead and do a dance competition too. Well, so, that's, yeah, well you know, mix business with pleasure. Does, there you, you go. Know, or in this case, uh, pleasure with pleasure. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, every competitive dancer has a kind of a different goal. Now, if you're in the top ranks, you are trying to be number one, and so there's that total mindset. But, you know, he's a he's an amateur dancer. This is his hobby. He's had this hobby for a long time. So just like someone might be very interested in golf, and they're very into that, so he's very into his dancing, and it's and for, very enjoyable. Yeah, for me, I I brewed beer for twenty five years. I mean, that's that's a nice hobby to have, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we will we'll, uh, we'll break into some of that here it's at at some point, maybe not on this episode. Yes. So but. anyway, so we enjoyed winning that top gold trophy. Uh, we're part of Studio Twenty Two. Uh, Studio? Uh, Studio 22 Studio 22, here 22 in Dallas. Oh, Dallas. Okay. Dallas, Texas. Okay. And so that's me. I'm a ballroom dancer. I perform and compete. But I am going to throw it to you because we don't have to talk about me the whole time. 
So we have a love of music. Yes, we do. Two of um, us together. Well, yeah. And you used to perform I as a did, professional uh, trumpet I, player. I did. I was behind the horn for over 15 years. Uh, you know, and lost my chops. Actually, I, I blew a valve out my heart, and so I couldn't play at the upper registers anymore, and I decided... Is that uh, your excuse? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's probably the best one I've heard. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's now y'all, you, you're left with, you know, just tapping stuff. You know, it's no big deal. Well, you're, and number, you're number two, you're number three. If you're not number one, yeah. See, that's what we're talking about, this competition. Yeah, that's... So, let's talk about this for just a second, because... Um, uh, about performing. Tell me about how you felt when you were performing, uh, playing your trumpet. Um, actually, I didn't really think about it so much. I mean, it's I never had a problem uh, getting on stage, uh, or playing in front of anybody, anybody, or no matter how big the crowd was. A lot of times, you got a bunch of lights in your face, so you can't see anybody. Exactly. So yeah, right. it's, you know that kind of negates all of that. That and you're pretty much just. Um, concentrating on on what you're doing and every night is different i mean you could sit there and practice with a band uh you know for years and years and years and then when when it comes to uh, live music it's something's gonna go wrong and so you just got to be able to be able to flow with it uh so you're always waiting for the shoe to drop i i love the spontaneity and the problem solving in the oh, moment yeah, of yeah. performing and That's so a, i think musicians have to deal with that more than any other probably performance art am i right or wrong Bob, well, no it's when you're doing live music it's there's nowhere to hide well <laughs> because you got more <laughs> see with with two dancers you just got two Two yeah. brains. Now, if yeah. you have a, how many yeah. were in your group usually? Uh, we were anywhere from um, just four of us mm-hmm. uh, with another band. The, yeah. So we were the horns from hell for a while. So I had, it was a trumpet uh, T-bone and I had uh, a, an alto and a, and a tenor sax. And so uh, that crew, we got together and we, we uh, sat in with a bunch of bands just because, you know, we, the, the broad uh, section of music that we could cover. Um, uh, and, but, uh, it was anywhere from, so it was on the four of us, but it was anywhere from eight up to 20. I, mean, I was up to 20, 25 piece band one time. I mean, that, at that point now you're 25 you know, piece band. Wow. You yeah. got to really pay attention to each other. Oh, yeah. But I want to come back to that because I think that's amazing when you have that many musicians together and it can be so beautiful and, uh, really challenge you as a professional when you got 25 people trying to make it come together but who influenced you to begin with to play trumpet and who was one of your best teachers at the beginning um i had so many teachers out there uh like most of them i can't remember their names now it's so long ago i um for me uh growing up uh we were always listening to salsa music and you know because i am puerto rican and so uh just listening to the bands um just the exposure from those guys uh the fanya all-stars back in the you know early 70s i was just going to ask you name some people because you know so uh, people can pull it up and just go uh, oh yeah yeah. listen listen to the uh the fanya all-stars you go back to uh 71 when you start to listen to some of those guys out there uh, they did. Uh, they did as uh, Puerto they, Rico is significant. Puerto Ricans in influencing salsa music, and there's oh, sure. such interesting websites out there about all the different salsa music in the world where it started. But wherever it started, uh, when Cuba was cut Actually, off, that's the other thing. Is then that Puerto Ricans in New York area yeah, totally kept, influenced kept the salsa music. Not just kept it going, but then yeah, added put, their put own their, little... Yeah, put their flavor on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that and um, listening to uh, the uh, uh, jazz, you know, with bebop. And so the Afro-Cuban uh, influence that, uh, that happened with that music, uh, I was huge in that thing. So I love jazz. So if you're going to recommend some jazz music to someone who maybe doesn't know about jazz. The one album I tell everybody, and even if you don't like jazz, you go get Miles Davis, Blue and Green. Uh, That thing is absolutely amazing. The talent that he had assembled uh, with Gil Evans, uh, you know, uh, he had uh, Cannonball there. He had Train. I'm like... Even people who don't like jazz own that album. 
<laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful album, oh, it and is. it's like uh, I remember one time my heart was hurting so bad, and I that music was um, is really you know getting to my heart, but I I couldn't turn it off. I no, had to I had to continue listening to it. And it was great. Okay, I want to go back. So you said you're listening to salsa music. What else? What else got you to actually play the trumpet? That's all I needed. That is. <laughs> you know, salsa music, that's it. Yeah, I know, well, I understand. It makes my feet move, so yeah, yeah. whether I, I like it or not. Yeah, you, listen, you put it on, you get your Snoopy feet. Really. <laughs> yeah, you can't, there's you been, can't. Oh, my gosh, i got to tell you, there's been some days. I'm going to take it back to you, I promise, but we're <laughs> teaching all day. I was competing professionally, so I was practicing in the morning, teaching all day. My feet hurt so bad. We go to a salsa club. That salsa music comes on. And it's like the red shoes. Here my feet go, and I start dancing. I mean, that's, my feet that's hurt. All but for some reason, they didn't hurt in that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that is exciting music, beautiful music. It gets people starting not just playing music but dancing. Okay, so what's the next step? You started playing your trumpet, and then? You just stayed on my horn. Marching band? Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was in the marching band. I was, yeah, I was, uh, hey, it's, it's marching band. <laughs> it well, is, I mean, it, it is what it is. But what's the benefit of that? Because there's something really great about that. Actually, there is um, there's a camaraderie that happens uh, with a marching band that you know you and until you're part of it, just like when you're on a team, uh, you really can't explain it to anybody. If you've never played organized sports or you've never uh, gotten a band and you know actually had to sit there and deal with uh, the personalities that are involved, and trust me, musicians. Um, Especially the higher you go, those, uh, yeah, they're, they're, this is a Petri dish, man. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's so much that's going on and the, 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 uh, the emotions, the personalities that have to mesh in order to make this thing happen. Right. Uh, we, I, I thankfully knock on wood, uh, never had to deal with guys who were divas mm-hmm. kind of deal, mm-hmm. you know, or oh, even, you're not in the dance business. Yeah. That's yeah. Why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or even, we got or, all the peacocks or yeah. Or even the, uh, the ladies that, uh, that, you know, I, I played with, I mean, either sax players or trumpet players. I mean, these girls were amazing. I mean, oh, when I showed up here in 84 here in Dallas, um, I got in with, uh, university of North Texas. And got in with some of those kids down there. The uh, the one o'clock band is the one that everybody knows, and those guys are world renowned. They're mm-hmm. never you can look it up and hear their music. Yeah, they're they're amazing. Yeah, I was sitting there playing with some of those guys from you know three and four o'clock, and they were scary. So where did they get that name? One o'clock, three o'clock. It's like that's, one... no, that's the hour that they go in. So it's just like first chair, one o'clock. No, no, no. It's, no, the uh, when you, that's that's their class. So it's scheduled. Oh, gotcha. But they, one o'clock is the best, right? The, the one o'clock is, is the best. best. Yeah, yeah, but they are the But you one. play with three o'clock, and you're like those three and four o'clock, and those guys are still scary. Yeah, and you had some advice for some of those guys in the three o'clock band. Oh what yeah, was it? you know what? Uh, those guys over there, because they were way too serious, and I'm like, you know, they practicing all the time. Yeah, they 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 practice, you know, six eight hours a day. Uh, you know, they go out there and do several bands. I mean, I'm like, dude, get a girl, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That horn so you can really understand the music that you're playing, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm like, leave so you that, can get confused. That, yeah, leave that melancholy. Horn, <laughs> put that horn down for ten or fifteen minutes, man. Go see a chick. Or <laughs> elated. No, yeah, I'm just throwing wow, things out just, there. No, you know, that's what music is all about. All those, those emotions. Yeah, those guys. They, I mean, they, they, they live, breathe, eat, <laughs> crap. I mean, it's, it's that, it's that horn, whatever, or that axe, whatever they're playing. Yeah. And they stay on that thing. So I think you were probably very natural because it sounds like you didn't really spend a lot of time. Uh, you've spent probably a lot of time practicing, but not like they did. No, not to their extent. No, these, these guys are trying and to And yet you were very successful. You were playing with these guys. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I had fun. Yeah. You know, but uh, at some point, hey, listen, I was working at... at uh, so I had my engineering gig and I had to be there at, uh, at 7 in the morning. It's kind of hard to sit there and, and uh, play with these cats up in here till you know, uh, 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, go home, sleep for an hour or two, and then, you know, get up and start your, you know, your day gig. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. I mean, I had a lot of fun. Yes. I, I totally enjoyed it. It was just, 
taxing and and only be, and only because I was an engineer home. by day, a professional trumpet player by uh, night. Yeah, musician by yeah. Yeah, that that's not a good recommendation. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Well, you do have a lot of energy, so uh, you were well, able to do it for some time. I did it for a while, but I'm yeah. like, at some point, you're like, okay, these guys are just way too good, and and I'm just sitting there taking a spot that. Uh, so they could put somebody else in here. And so that's when I eventually, okay, put my, I actually sent my horn home. <laughs> Go away. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I kept the mouthpiece, but I sent the horn away. It's very interesting, though, like, you know, uh, the moment you decide to stop doing something. You, you know, it's like there's uh, a moment where you're yeah, like. Yeah, you, you look at it and. Because there's a love and a passion for it. I it, There is a love and a passion for it, but at the end of the day, I'm like, hey, listen, I'm not making money on this thing. Uh-huh. All the money I'm making, I'm drinking. And so... Oops. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's one of the reasons why I think you and I so passionately want to support people that have such talent uh, because... I, you know what? My hat's off to them. If you can make money doing this... That's it. Because yeah. I cho- this is my profession. I'm a full-time dancer, teacher, performer. And there were times where it was not very lucrative. Uh, you have to grow the business. Yes. You have to grow the business. You have to be passionate about it. I mean, uh, well, I got stories. But we have more than one podcast. <laughs> Lord willing, but <laughs> yeah, I got absolutely. some stories. I got some good stories, and so do you. Well, but, you know, like I said, uh, you, you get to a point where you're like, um, you know what? I'm just taking up space. Um, I enjoy what I'm doing. This is Just fun. for the record, I never feel like you take up space. But you do have to sometimes, and I think this is what you're saying, make room for future talent. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean yeah. they got kids that are coming up. Uh, right. I they mean, do that in the Navy. So we were just at the... Uh, oh, the military does that. After 30 yes. years, I don't care how good you are. Yeah, you move you out of the way. It's so very go. interesting. They have it sort of planned, but I think it has to be sort of an emotional decision. But you have such talent, and you are a energetic and talented handsome guy well, well, thank you, you can't have him ladies he's mine but oh i'm just saying that out loud uh, are we recording uh, no yeah, yeah. well yeah the light the light is on oh yay the light is on. um so not so that's why we are doing this I, you have an experience in music not just in music well that's the other thing also when in I, photography yeah well when i that might be another podcast i well, don't know yeah they, they, that's for another time um actually when i sent my horn away i picked the camera back up now i've been ah the timing of that perfect yeah it's just another just another release yeah uh, I am the I'm that hybrid where I have I'm an analytical mind, mm-hmm. you know, electrical engineering, but yes. uh, I have the eye of uh, of an artist, and yes. so I see things that most people can't or don't see. You do have a beautiful eye for photography, I yeah, have to say. Yeah, and so yeah. I, what I did was I said put my horn down and I just put it changed my passion, so yes. I started doing you know more and more photography. Um, Fifteen years, I did wedding photography. Uh, I I'll t- I tell people, I says, I'll shoot anybody doesn't shoot me first. Uh, <laughs> I was I, that is another podcast. <laughs> that, that is another one. I mean, I'm talking about photography. Oh yeah, talk about photography. Um, I was sitting there turning out fifty to sixty thousand frames a year. Yeah, and I've seen your work, and it is absolutely fantastic and it's interesting to see different photographers uh results of the the same event or another event so it's just a different point of view (laughs) yeah your point of view is amazing and you actually photographed many but i remember the first dance performance that you photographed of me when we first met each other Okay. And I was like, oh. I don't, re- I don't remember it, but. Uh, you captured some beautiful shots, and I was thinking, oh, I look so cute. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, I, I feel like you. I was inspired <laughs> by the moment. <laughs> right. No, no. Honestly, I felt like you captured. It's interesting how someone can capture the same person and make them look absolutely lovely 
and in the right moment and the same situation or event, another photographer will catch a moment that's not so attractive. So I feel like you have a really eye for beauty and you capture that and of course that makes people happy that you photograph. Very yeah, happy. They, yeah, I, yeah. Get, I get invited back quite often. Yeah, that's why you get paid the big bucks <laughs> yeah, well, for I, that. Or yeah, did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? You're a wedding photographer again this year. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Well, it's because his daughter got married. Well, that. And we, Good uh, friends in I was, Ecuador. Uh, yeah, and some friends in Ecuador. And then and, 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 uh, our nephew, uh, the Naval Academy. So last month, I was ready for June. We were... Uh, last month it was three weddings and two graduations, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Quite a bit of travel. And a competition. Oh, and a competition, yeah. but I, I wasn't there for that one. Yeah, I know, but it's literal. Literally three weddings, yeah. Yes, it was and three weddings, two, two graduations. graduations. I can't wait to think about it. You said that today to me, today, three weddings. I'm like, he's exaggerating. Oh, no, it no, was three it weddings. Was, it was and, exactly. Oh, by the way, I was there for all of them, but it was a lot happening in May. Exciting, exciting time it, for our family. It was a, it was a grand time. But oh, I'll my be, gosh, I, yes. But I'll be honest with you, I was ready for June. I'm <laughs> like, I am so... Why? What's happening in June? Are we going to travel some more? <laughs> Heck no. I, I, I just... Oh, that's what July is for. Yeah, that's what July is okay. for. Okay. Well, uh, this is great. And I, I we've had wonderful, wonderful times with all of our traveling. And we do have to talk about more of that. There's so much to talk about here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we canvassing DFW. To, we are going to be canvassing DFW. That was the whole uh, premise. Uh, that's what we want to do. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, get our things together where we can start uh, contacting local talent and says, hey, listen, if you want a, um, a platform to um, try to better yourself, get yourself out there, get the people that, uh, you know, that they hear about you, come see your shows, whatever. Uh, we're going to get a, we're going to get a hold of you eventually. This. And contact us. Feel free. Yeah, well, then yeah. I, I'm working on all the uh, email information so that uh, it makes sense to everyone. Um, but you can uh, hit me up on Facebook and on Twitter. I am Jose on the mic. Uh, Jose on the M-I-C. 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 Yes. On the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Still with uh, the Ian Gleason Show, so if you want to hit us through the, our page, um, the Ian Gleason Show, you can certainly do so. Leave me a message. We will get back in touch with you until we get everything set up where, you know, towards our end. That's kind of one or a couple of ways that you can uh, contact us. And if you feel like starting to dance, or if you already are a dancer, <laughs> you want to come to Studio 22, uh, studio22dallas.com. Studio22Dallas.com. Okay, so they're, so that's their website? Correct. Okay, perfect. Um, Preston and Beltline, North Preston, Dallas. Preston and Beltline, yeah. for those of you who are local, then you can certainly go ahead and, and check that so out. So many great teachers there. Uh, actually, they really they really are. Excellent. Performers, teachers, we, we, were, we are going to invite to the show. Actually, we were, I was just going to bring that up. Mm-hmm. Um, We've had some dancers that just... Uh, competed in Blackpool, England, and so we're going to have them on the show and tell what us all exactly about that. What exactly is Blackpool, England? So I, I'm going to give just a little blip of this because a I really, little teaser. Mm-hmm, it mm. is a teaser. There we go. Yeah. So I'm because I want them to tell us all about it, but I'm not going to even say who it is because there were several there, and we're going to have all of them on the show, Lord willing. But anyway, uh, Blackpool, England, is the most prestigious competition in the world. It's in Blackpool, England, and it is just amazing. And there's so much to tell about that. That needs to be a whole podcast in itself. So I will not go further than that at this moment. But well, just well, to say that my colleagues okay, well, attended, and we will interview them. We are. We will be efforting to get them on because, um, let's face it, <laughs> who doesn't like a good competition? And at that level... Oh, yeah, that's... The dancers are beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Awesome, awesome. Okay, with that, um, we are going to leave you now. I am Jose on the mic with my lovely host, uh, the amazing dancer, Amay. Thank you for uh, hanging with us. Uh, We're going to do this again very, very soon. 
This has been Canvassing DFW. Thank you, Jose.